Luke chapter 5 and verse 4. We've been talking the past several weeks about our line. Say, our line. Now, I know I've got a southern accent, so you might be thinking I'm talking about one of those things that roar this morning, but I'm talking about a fishing line. I'm talking about the line of the house of God being extended, a line of a lineage, generations being extended to reach nations and generations for His glory. So we've been talking about that from Psalms chapter 19. If you need a reference point, you can go back and look at that, that God has a line. Say, God has a line. And with Abraham, you can see that line that he was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. And then if you look in Timothy, you can see this same line being extended through Timothy's family. When Paul saw, told Timothy, he said, I see the faith that was in your grandmother Lois and in Eunice, and it's in you. That same unfeigned faith. So it's a faith that's passed down through generations. So when we talk about legacy life, we talk about this family of believers. We're talking about a blessing that extends through generations. Say generations. generations. Now when you look at the scripture, you'll find that there was a word called covenant. C -c 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 covenant. I know it's a cuss word to some people. A lot of people break covenant and they don't want to stay in covenant. But how many believe God, he honors covenant? Yeah. Covenant is very important with God. Covenant with God's house. Covenant with your spouse. Amen. He wants you to keep covenant. And as you keep covenant, it extends that lineage. It extends generational blessings. In the scripture, there was a word in the Hebrew called hest. Hest. They would cut covenant. They would literally cut an animal in half, and they'd walk between the two, meet together, and they would say, your battles are my battles. Your victories are my victories. And for eight generations, they would keep that covenant. Eight generations. Can you imagine that? For your great, 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 great grandfather to cut covenant and then for you to be called to war because they, call, they cut covenant eight generations before? Can you imagine that? That's exactly what would happen. didn't matter. They didn't even know that person. But because they cut covenant, that covenant passed down through generations. Do you know the same way, the same principle is in, in effect with the way that wealth is passed through the Hebrew customs? Same, that covenant with family, that covenant wealth. That's why generational income increases, 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 increases. That's why you see a lot of the Jewish people, no matter how far they were pushed down, no matter how far Hebrews were pushed down, come on somebody, they've rose to the top because they knew how to keep covenant with each other. They knew how to pass the generational blessing to the next generation, to the next generation. So they own hotels and high rises and businesses software companies, and they touch the world. Why? Well, see, a lot of people don't get that in America with an independent spirit. We don't recognize that God wants lineage, legacy, to be extended through the nations through keeping covenant. Come on, shake your coconut if you're with me today. Amen. Give me a Baptist nod. Hallelujah. Maybe you can raise your hand and say, Go, holy, holy, holy. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. <laughs> glory adios. Whatever you want to say. Amen. Just say it. Hallelujah. Listen, <laughs> man. So it's 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 important though for you to get beyond an independent spirit. We need some of them clicker things, right? Click 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 click. Like I was I was in Spain, Spain a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> and it was fun. I, all these people were gathered around dancing. Da, 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 da. Anyhow, uh, oh no. Yeah, we can bring in the Greek custom too and say, "Opa," right? But, it, but it's important for you to recognize that God desires uh, legacy, line, the line of his kingdom to be extended. God is about generations. He's about family. How many believe our God is a father? He's the heavenly father. And he wants his family to grow. How does he grow his family? When we as a body of believers keep covenant and we pass it down through generations when we extend his line through generations. Now, I'm going to show you a picture of this in the Bible from Luke chapter 5. And I'm going to show you a picture. Hopefully, you'll catch it today. You'll see how God causes us to move forward. Verse 4. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, you have to understand, when you read this passage, they were tired Efficient. They had toiled all night. Everyone say toiled all night. Toiled. They had toiled all night. They were exhausted. 
and they were, cl they were cleaning their nets, so they brought their nets in. They're ready to quit working. And now here's when Jesus says, launch out into the deep and cast your nets. You know, sometimes God will ask you to do something when you're at the end of yourself. Well, don't shout me down when the preaching's good. When you come to the end of yourself is when you come to the beginning of a breakthrough in God. When you come to the end of yourself, it's when you come to the beginning of a breakthrough in God. When you are exhausted, that's when God takes over because it's not by might nor by power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. How many know it's by his spirit? It's by his spirit. So when you see this passage here, they're exhausted. They've toiled all night. And Jesus says, all right, you've tried to fish, but let me show you what a master fisherman fish is like. Let me show you the one that created these fish and know where they're swimming right now. Let me show you what, it, what happens when you fish with me and you're not doing it on your own. Verse 5, But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. That needs to be underlined in your Bible if you, if you underline or highlight, if you've got something to highlight with. You need to say that, nevertheless. Everyone say, nevertheless. <laughs> nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So no matter how tired you are, if you'll have a nevertheless, if you'll say, nevertheless, God can use you. And if, if, you'll, if you'll get a nevertheless attitude, that, you know, I'm exhausted, but nevertheless, I'll do what you say, Jesus. I'll go where you say. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll do what you want me to do. Then you'll see a breakthrough. Watch this. Nevertheless, the next key is at your word. When he gives you a word, how many know you can walk on it? Jesus proved that out in Scripture later. He said, if that's you, Jesus, just bid me to come. And just on four letters, C-O-M-E, come. He went out walking on the water. Amen. Amen. You can go at his word. Say, at his word. At his word. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, and when they had done this, how many know you've got to be a doer of the word? They caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boats, to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. Can I tell you, there is a catch of fish coming for the kingdom of God. There is a harvest that's at hand right now that we've never experienced that's about to overtake us. I'm talking a serious catch of fish. A serious catch of fish. Glory to God. Boy, I feel his anointing just thinking about it. Go with me to Ezekiel. Now, there, I'm, I'm probably uh, driving our media team crazy because I had so many other scriptures that I'd given them, and I keep going to other things first, but I just, I'm here and... I'm here in the Holy Spirit, so I just have to go with what he says. Amen? We have to, we have to uh, in, in football, they call it an audible. Holy Spirit's the quarterback today. He's calling audibles up here. Is that all right? Amen. Ezekiel 47. Ezekiel 47. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. How many know the water is still flowing from the house of God today? Amen. How many believe you need to be a part of a place like Legacy, that the water's flowing to the city? Amen. He brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gateward that faces east, and there was water running out on the right side. And when the man went out to the east with the line, with the line, everyone say the line. the line, with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters came up to my ankles. Again, he, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters, and the waters came up to my knees. 
Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the water, and it came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross over. How many are thankful for the river of God? And it was a river that I could not cross over, for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of, of the river. And when I returned, there along the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and on the other. These are legacy trees. And then he said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region, goes down into the valley, and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. How many know the healing waters from the house of God heal other waters that are stagnant? Come on, somebody. Mm. The waters are healed, and it shall be. Everyone say, shall be. Come on, say it like you mean it. It shall be. Come on, say, it shall be. That everything that moves wherever the river goes will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish. Multitude of fish. Because these waters go there. For they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it from Engedi to Engelium. And there will be places for spreading their nets. Their fish will be of the same kinds of the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many. Exceedingly many. Go with me, if you will, over to uh, Matthew chapter 13. Still calling audibles. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I will just follow you today. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Matthew 13 and verse 47. Matthew 13 and verse 47. How many love his word? It's mm -mm good. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind. Some of every kind. How many believe the kingdom is like a big net? So what I've been seeing... I've been seeing this vision that the Lord gave me years ago. I've been seeing this, these lines that are connecting over cities and over nations coming together to begin to bring in a great harvest. Say a great harvest. These are legacy lines. These are family lines. These are generational lines. This is a lineage, a line of generations coming together, forming a net to bring in whole cities into the kingdom. Whole cities coming in. Fish of every kind. Fish of every kind. How many know Jesus didn't do anything on accident? He did it on purpose. So his message that he preached before he told them to cast the net on the other side was just a precursor. It was just an appetizer for the main message. The main message was what he was doing. You read scripture, it says those things that Jesus both begin to do and to teach. Say, do and teach. So Jesus would show his message by example, then he would teach from it. He would give a story. He would, he would show people with an illustration. Then he would teach out of it. So Jesus is with his disciples in Luke chapter 5. Follow me. Come closely. Come closely. Bend your ear and listen to what I'm saying today. Don't get lost. Stay with me. Luke chapter 5. He's excited. He's preaching. He's winning the loss. Now he says, these guys don't know how to fish. These guys have been trying to toil all night. Let me teach them. Let me show them a real message. Life message. You see, before that, he'd say, come follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men. So he said, I'm going to show these people how to really be fishers of men. I'm going to show them. I told them I would show them how to be fishers of men, but let me show them now. So he takes them out on to the water. He says, cast the nets on the other side. And then they begin to catch the greatest catch of fish that they'd ever seen. So much so that Peter fell down on his face before Jesus' knees, and he's, he was astonished, and he was worried, and he said, I'm not worthy. I can't, I, I can't believe this. Why? Now, you understand, Peter had grew up as a little boy fishing on those boats. He had saw great catches of fish, but this great catch of fish was so great that it made him fall down to his knees and worship a man 
named Jesus. Think about it. Think about it. This net. Now, Jesus, what he was doing, he was not only preaching a message to Peter, he was preaching a message to generations to catch. He said, I want people to read this story, and I want them to see how they'll catch many fish. He said, when you come to the end of yourself, that's when you're at the beginning of breakthrough. If you'll keep fishing when you think you're too tired to fish, that's when you're going to bring in a harvest. He said, I want to show you, when you've toiled all night and you've done everything you can, and it's not by might nor by power, it's by my spirit. I'm going to show you how to fish. When you, when you think you need to stop fishing, that's when you need to begin. He said, I'm going to show you even more. I'm going to show you that if you fish where I assign you to fish, if you understand apostolic assignment, if you'll fish how I tell you to fish, when I tell you to fish, where I tell you to fish, you're going to bring in a great catch of fish. Now, you have to understand, this is crazy. This is crazy because they didn't fish in the daytime. They had fished all night. I told you the other week that when I was a kid, I used to fish. And when I would fish, I would uh, get behind the tree so that the shadow of the tree would hide my shadow. And I would drop my bait, my hook, right there where that tree line was. And the fish would get it because they wouldn't see me. How I many know we need to hide behind the cross, Amen. that tree? And I told you how that shadow, well, the same thing. A lot of fishermen fish at night because it's easier to catch fish. The day the fish is hot, they want to go down low, it's easier to catch them, if, especially when you're fishing with nets, if, if you can catch them when they're up where it's cooler in the, in the evening. So, so now Jesus is telling them to do something that's totally unconventional. Unconventional. How many know we serve an unconventional God? Yeah, we, he, he's the uncola God. Unconventional. So what does he do? He says, cast the nets... In the daytime, after you're tired, after you come to the end of yourself, and then you'll catch a, a great catch of fish. And just as they threw the nets, the Bible says, they did as he said. And when they cast the nets in, the nets were so filled with fish that they began to break. This is what's about to happen. The average believer, I've been telling you this for years, but now we're here. This is that. You remember Peter when he said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel? See, for years they had read the book of Joel, but on this day, he said, this is that. I'm telling you, Legacy Life, this is that. I'm telling you, Legacy Life, this is that. This is harvest time. I've been talking about this for over a decade. I've been talking about this since 1998, 99. I've been telling you that there's a harvest coming. Can I tell you, you we are in it right now. We're, we're in the greatest time, the greatest season. We've only got like about three or four years to ramp up to where people are not going to be able to catch up with what's going on. The average believer, believer will lead 15 people to the Lord in a day. That's what he told me. The average believer will lead 15 people to the Lord in a day. Some of you are going to be full-time soul winners. You won't have time to do anything else but win souls. Because so many people are going to be hungry for God. Amen? Have you ever been fishing and a, a, a fish jump in the boat? I have. That just jumped right in the boat. I'm like, my goodness. That, that fish want to be caught. You ever seen flying fish? You ever been out there in the water and the fish... Fish are flying, they, they sure enough. So, but see, you know what? If you get your net ready and get it on the other side, get it outside of what you want to do and put it on the side that he wants to do, then you'll bring in a great catch of fish. Amen. Now, these ships, let's talk about them a little bit. Let's write this down, write these words down. Sh we, we talked about last week, this, these ships are worship. Worship will help you get out to where you need to be to bring in a great catch of fish. If you don't have worship in your life, if you're not a worshiper, then you're not going to have that intimacy, the oil of intimacy in your life to be able to minister to people's needs. You'll be grumpy and sad and upset. You'll be fussing. You'll, everybody, everybody think you're just like the world. You'll, be, you'll look like you're sucking on persimmons and lemons. Be all upset. I told this before, but it's worth repeating. There's this little boy. And his, uh, he went shopping with his grandmother, but, but just before he did, you know, he was asking his grandmother, why, why do you always 
why do you always frown? And they were walking through the store. As they walked through the store, he looked at her and said, why do you all, all the time look like this? She said, because I'm saved. <laughs> I'm saved. And he was like, what? You know? He gets back home. They unload the groceries. He goes, into the, uh, goes out to the barn. He gets up on the side of the stall, looks in there, and there's a mule. Mule's looking at him like this. He said, I guess you're saved too. <laughs> there's a lot of people. That's what they look like. Yeah. I call them constipated Christians. Somebody said, you just said that? Yeah. They just, just totally, no outflow, no flow in their life. All they do is come to church, take, 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 but they don't have a worship lifestyle. Because they don't have a worship lifestyle, nothing's flowing in their life. No river flowing. And because of that, they can't reach people. People don't want what you got if you walk around like this. You mad at the world. Every time you talk, some people you talk to them, every time you talk to them, you know you're going to be down when you leave them. I mean, they can have a great week. God can bless them. I didn't make enough money. I didn't get enough. I didn't get, uh, so-and-so didn't do this. You know, some people are the glass half empty. Some people are the glass half full. But believers need to be the glass overflowing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Overflowing. Yeah. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. The, the Amplified says, filled to the full, even to the overflow. Yeah. Should be like, nah, I, ain't, ain't, ain't make that. I didn't get that. I didn't get a raise. You know why you didn't get a raise? Because the way you look all the time. You know? <laughs> Mad. Everybody's upset. You look, look like you're upset with the world. Come on, get a smile on your face. Be happy with people. Love people. If you got Jesus in your heart, you can smile, right? Some of y'all need to push it up. Amen. <laughs> Watch this. Now, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet. How does this happen? Kingdom of heaven, we begin to build relationships. Now, I told you covenant. Some of you said, where does that come? When I cut covenant with another brother or sister, come on, take my hand. I ta that's all right. I'll take her hand. That's so good. That's it. And I cut covenant here. Come on, you take that hand there. All right. You take, take her hand. You take hers. Take theirs. Go, go ahead. All right. Now, you get a big line. And people that are lost that I can't reach because of covenant, I can extend them out. How many have watched one of those programs on TV when somebody's about to die and they hold on to each other and then they hold on to somebody else yeah. and then they hold on to somebody else? Come on, let it keep going. Keep going. You should be grabbing hands all around the building. Keep going. Turn around behind you. There you go. Come on. You got to get up, Ted. I know it's a hard job. <laughs> all right. Grab hands. Grab hands. Come on. Uh, watch. Somebody that you couldn't reach. Look at this. Watch this. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? I'm sorry, my sister. You might have to get up. Come on. She's, come on. There you go. Grab hands. You got to reach. Y'all got to reach. This is our outreach. You reach. Reach. There you go. Reach. Come on. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. What's happening? Lines increasing. What's happening? Stand up with me. Come on, y'all help me. What's happening? The line's increasing. What's happening? Talk to me, church. What's happening? There's a line that's increasing. There's a net. Now you begin to cross. Watch this. Cross, cross hands with somebody else. What happens? There's a net. Come over here. Right here. Right here. There's relationship. See a net? Do you see it? Yeah. Start reaching out. Start touching people. Cross over with somebody over there. Some of y'all like, I'm getting, oh, she getting it, getting blessed. It's all right. Leave her there. She's not drunk as she supposes. As you suppose, this is that. Go ahead, cross over with somebody. Come over here. Cross over with somebody. Y'all can do it. Cross over. There you go. Cross over. Keep crossing. Watch what happens. I know we got a lot of chairs in the middle. We got a lot of chairs, but what happens is, is you become a great net. That's right. Amen. You become a great net. That's right. A net that brings in a great harvest. Yes. That's it. That's yes. it. They, they're moving. 
I love it. Look at when you start moving together, relationships, covenant. Thank you, Lord. Covenant, staying together, working together, not only for you, but for future generations. It brings in a harvest. And what you couldn't do just by being a line out there by yourself, now when we get relationships, watch this. Watch this. There's a net. Stay with me, church. I'm preaching. Watch this. There's a net and a fish that's, that's somebody that's lost that could get away from one line can't get away from all of our relationships. Amen. Amen. We can bring in a great catch of fish. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord praise. Come on, give the Lord praise. It starts, watch this, listen. It starts when you get on the relationship. Write that down. When you get on the relationship with Jesus, if you're living in relationship with Him, that relationship with Him and with others in covenant forms a net. And what you couldn't do by yourself, then you begin to do as a family, as the ecclesia. You begin to reach the city. You begin to reach nations. Amen? That relationship is fueled by living on the worship. On worship. On the vessel of worship. I know it's not proper English, but just stay with me. When you get on the worship, then you'll be empowered through an intimate relationship with Him. That's how intimacy is formed, through worship. And when we worship together as a family, how many believe there's just great breakthrough that happens? And when you live a lifestyle of worship, it fuels you so that you can go forth and express your sonship. I'm giving you some good thoughts today. You can write down if you stay with me. You move in as a son of God. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? The sons of God. You can express your sonship when you have relationship that's fueled by worship. That sonship, you go forth, the Bible says, they that are what? Led? They are the sons of God. So if you're a son of God, you're going to do what God does. So Jesus came to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to raise the dead, and then he said, freely you have received, now freely go and give. Yes. So if Jesus, if the purpose of Jesus, here, here, listen to this. You want to know Jesus' mission statement in life? To annihilate the works of the devil. That was his, it said, for this purpose was the Son of Man manifest that he might annihilate the works of the devil. So he, everywhere he went, he went to deal with depression. If somebody was depressed, he's going to cast depression out. He's going to bring joy everywhere he went. If he went where there was sickness, he would heal the sick. He wouldn't leave people in sickness. If there was somebody dead, he would raise the dead. So if we're sons of God, then we'll go forth and express our sonship by ministering to people's needs. And out of that ministry to people's needs, we will form friendships. Friendships. It's good. Write it down. It's a good note. You'll form friendships with the world. Jesus was a friend of sinners. You cannot win somebody if you don't love them. You can't walk around thinking they got the cooties. <laughs> I can't be with them. I can't be with, like little boys with little girls. I can't hang out with them. They got cooties. <laughs> Y'all looking at me like, he said that in church. Come on. You can't, you can't love, you can't win the harvest if you don't smell like the harvest. You have to get with people. Be friends with them. I didn't say you need to go out drinking with them and get drunk. I didn't say you need to show up and twerk with them. Come on. I was trying to win them, Apostle. I was just out there with them. I was trying to win them. No, you don't have to act like them. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do to win the harvest? You become a friend of people in the harvest. 
So I'm going to give it to you again. Number one, you first get into the harvest and you establish this net, these lines to bring in the harvest through relationship. Your first relationship is with Jesus. Say Jesus. And from that relationship, he said, how do you say that you, you love your heavenly father whom you have not seen if you don't love your brother who you have seen? There's a lot of people say, me and Jesus got our own thing going. Me and Jesus going to work it out. And they think it's all just Jesus and them. And they don't need the body, but you need the body. And Jesus put it this way, if you don't love each other, then you don't love me. Somebody said, well, I'm in the kingdom. I'm in the kingdom. I'm in the kingdom. I don't need the church. I'm in the kingdom. Well, you need to take it up with Jesus because he shed his blood for the church. He said, upon this rock I will build what? Amen. So we need each other. So he says, I want you to form relationships with each other, cut covenant with each other, not just for you, but for your children and your children's children. So you form relationships with the body that your great-grandchildren one day can depend upon. You build a relationship just like the Hebraic customs so that when your great-grandchildren, when you're long gone, there'll be somebody that have your grandchildren's back. They'll, come on, somebody. There'll be somebody that'll go to war on their behalf and for their destiny. Some of us, we get very selfish with this. We get very selfish and we move into a place of it's just what we want for us. But your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren one day are going to need somebody that knows how to pray for them. It's not a consumer mentality. I wrote these things down. Let me, write, let me share this with you. There's a lot of people that have a consumer mentality. And because they have a consumer mentality, they find themselves constantly looking to get what they can get for the moment that will appease their flesh, and they miss out on building something that will reach generations. So, if we're going to establish what I call no-fly zones, like around this property right here, this is controlled. There's a control tower here, and you can only come into this area and land in this area if you have permission to land in this area. Is everybody with me? And so if a city is going to be captured by the net, by this kingdom net, if we're going to bring in a great harvest of souls, then there, there's going to be no fly zones that are going to be established over whole cities. Where I believe whole cities, listen to me, I know this is really big, but I believe we serve a big God. I believe that there will be cities that will be established like cities of refuge, and those cities will literally experience such power of God that people will just want to come and get in the atmosphere and they'll be healed. They'll literally drive into the city quarters, the city limits, and there'll be healing in their body. There'll be breakthrough for them. Are you with me? I believe there'll be whole cities where divorce rates, crime rates will come down because they'll be established as no-fly zones. The enemy cannot come into that area. I know some of y'all are looking at me like this is like, like really out there. But that's what happens when nets are formed. That's what happens when relationships come together. We begin to overtake an area because the anointing begins to overtake the area. Covenant releases that. Now, if you have a consumer mentality, you can't conquer a city. God says you need to move from a consumer mentality to a contributor mentality. You need to move from, from a complaining mentality to a complimenting mentality. To compliment instead of complain. That's how you build relationships. Say relationships. So I'm going to close because I can tell that the, the mind can only handle as much as the rear end can endure. So I'm going to take it, keep it really short. But this net, these relationships are released and fueled when we know how to worship. Say worship. In the coming weeks, we're going to have some teaching on worship. Elder Harvest is going to be coming on November 1st to teach us on Sunday night on worship. That's a class, that's a time, an opportunity you need to afford yourself to on a Sunday evening to say, I need to learn about worship. 
Because that worship, that lifestyle of worship, it releases that oil for the boat, for your ship to be able to get where it's going. And you can begin to express your sonship. Sonship. How many sons of God are here? Amen. Come on, when you're a son and you're not just a servant, when you're a son, you can know the secrets of the Father. Amen. Amen. And he'll show you how to fish and bring in a great company of fish. How do we bring in fish? Friendships. Friendships. You need to this week, I'm giving you a key, this week, befriend a sinner. This week, love somebody. Amen. You don't have to tell them turn or burn. Get right or get left. You don't have to win them to the Lord the first day you meet them. You can love them today, love them next week, take them to lunch. Don't have any hidden agenda other than just love them. And watch and see from that friendship, watch this, from that friendship, they'll be entering into relationship. And these ships are keep going and being filled with harvest. These kingdom nets are keep flowing. Genesis 22 is where I intended to go today. So if you get some time this week, read Genesis 22. We'll get there next week. But we're going to talk about this this relationship, how it's formed and how we reach generations, whole generations. We can possess gates of cities. We can establish no-fly zones. Whole cities can be taken for the glory of God. I see Orlando awakened by the power of God. I see Orlando awakened by the love of God. I see all of Orlando, all of Central Florida. Listen to me. I know this is, this is a bold statement. But I see people that don't even want to know God being shook by the power of God. And on their face, on the ground, beside the street, they'll, they'll, they'll pull their car off the road. This is what I saw. They'll pull their car off the road and they'll bow on the ground and they'll cry out to God. This is the hour that you and I live in. It all comes back to our relationship, our worship, expressing our sonship, establishing friendships, brings people into relationship. Amen. Continual, continual flow. How many know people need Jesus? Stand to your feet with me. People need Jesus. People need Jesus. Let's sing that song, I love, I love. Let him know how much we love him today. Today, maybe you're here and you say, Joshua, you know, I, I'm hearing what you're saying, but I'm not even in the ship. I don't feel like I'm, I'm where I should be. I need, I need to be in relationship with God. I need, I need that net. I want to be captured by his love. I, I want to receive that love that he has for me. Well, he's here for you today. You can establish that relationship. Maybe you're here and you knew Jesus, but you've just fallen out of a close relationship with him, and you want to restore that and reestablish a close, intimate relationship through a life of worship. You say, Joshua, I've, I, I have a relationship, but it's, it's just out of touch. I need to get back in worship with him. I need to love him like I should. If that's you... There's a place today at the altar for you, a place for you just to be bathed in his presence, to be changed. Amen. If you're here today and you say, Joshua, that's me. I need to be in relationship with the Lord and I'm not where I should be. If that's you, lift your hand. I want to pray for you. Amen. I see that hand. Come up here, my friend.